Raising children vegan is already a controversial topic, involving such hot-button issues as proper parenting, dietary choice, child nutrition, religious freedom, and parental responsibility. But when a vegan infant or child becomes seriously ill or passes away, the debate moves from the realm of the controversial to the criminal. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. At the time of this video's release, a draft bill in Italy aims to impose jail time on parents who feed their children a vegan diet. The bill, proposed by Elvira Savino of the center-right Forza Italia party, follows the fourth hospitalization of a vegan child in 18 months. While the media flurry around the bill in Italy will no doubt soon be replaced with the next controversy of the moment, this is not the first, nor will it be the last time the endangerment and death of children presumably being fed a vegan diet has garnered international attention. As with most stories in the media, there's plenty of coverage surrounding the Savino bill, but not a whole lot of pertinent information being offered. As the media largely runs on sensationalism and speed, selling editions and ad space trumps accuracy of presentation, and quantity outpaces quality every time. Connecting a vegan diet with a criminally malnourished child is sure to sell, but what's rarely discussed in these cases is specifically what the child was being fed and whether there were other contributing factors. When these details are provided, usually in follow-up stories quietly released long after the frenzy, the real problem is revealed. Let's look at some examples. In France, the 11-month-old daughter of a militant vegan couple died reportedly from severe vitamin deficiencies due to her diet consisting exclusively of her mother's breast milk. Interestingly, the fact that she was only given breast milk is presented as a crime in and of itself. Of course, later it's revealed that after being told their daughter had pneumonia in a previous trip to the hospital, the parents ignored the doctor's orders and instead treated her illness with mustard, garlic, and clay on the advice of a 35-year-old text on alternative medicine. With the mother's vegan diet, now but a side note. In England, a baby died as a result of a raw vegan diet, which apparently consisted of tomato juice and water. In Atlanta, Georgia, the six-week-old son of a vegan couple starved to death, this time on a mixture of soy milk and apple juice. In perfect summation, the Atlanta prosecutor stated that, no matter how many times they want to say, we're vegans, we're vegetarians, that's not the issue in this case. The child died because he was not fed, period. If I fed a child an exclusive diet of Oreo cookies, would the resulting health consequences mean a vegan diet is dangerous for kids? Were a child in Europe, where Oreos do contain animal byproducts, fed the exact same diet, would their resulting health consequences mean a non-vegan diet is dangerous for kids? In addition to the information that's not offered, it's important to also take note of the writer's language choices. The smallest tweak in vocabulary can infuse a presumably impartial report with extreme bias, essentially making the reader's conclusions for them before they even read the story. In the Italy articles, we have such gems as parents who impose vegan diet on their children allegedly being restricted to a vegan diet after they had been coerced into adopting a vegan diet, making young children eat a vegan diet, insist on a vegan diet, parents who force vegan diets on their children. Definitely fair and balanced. In reality, we don't know enough about the hospitalized children in Italy. I was only able to find individual stories on three of the four, with one not even sure if the child was fed a vegan diet. Still, the public is left with a message screamed in every headline that veganism is a dangerous diet forcefully imposed upon children by their criminally irresponsible parents' adherence to militant ideology. Once again, sensationalism sacrifices objective truth. The reinforcement of these falsehoods reach far beyond the case in Italy. The misinformation and disinformation surrounding nutrition and the true impact of animal products on our health and the health of our children is a global issue. It results in such absurdities as Savino's bill. Now, I'm not saying parents shouldn't be held responsible for their child's health. Quite the opposite. Were Savino simply calling for accountability when a child's inadequate nutrition leads to severe illness or death, I doubt there'd be much resistance. But she states her purpose is to stigmatize the reckless and dangerous eating behavior imposed by parents who pursue a vegan diet to the detriment of minors. She states that vegetarian and vegan diets are by default deficient in zinc, iron, vitamin D, B12, and omega-3s, as well as quality protein and saturated fat. 
The bill then calls for a punishment ranging from one year for even feeding a child a meatless diet to up to six years if such a diet results in a child's death. Shockingly enough, there exists something of a legal precedence for this in Italy. In April 2015, Italian courts ordered a mother to feed her son meat once a week. After her former husband, who took his son out for meals at McDonald's and prepared desserts, meat, and dairy dishes on weekends, complained that the macrobiotic diet his mother had started him on, the actual specifics of which, again, are not included, was putting him at risk. Oddly enough, the father was also ordered to not feed his son meat more than twice on the weekends. While this is certainly a more extreme manifestation, Savino's bill is just another example of the perverse reversal of truth inherent in the medical and nutrition fields. To illustrate what I mean, in 2013, Savino proposed a bill calling for an increase in support for children with blood disorders and cancers. In her current bill, she's essentially calling for the forced feeding of meat to children. Study after study has shown the connection between consuming animal products and incidence of cancer, with the World Health Organization now classifying certain processed meats definitively as Class 1 carcinogens. And while the WHO only evaluated red and processed meats, the largest study on diet and cancer in human history following a half million people over 10 years now additionally included poultry, offal, eggs, and dairy in their analysis and found that poultry consumption was most associated with the risk of developing lymphoma up to triple the rates for every 50 grams, the equivalent of just a quarter of a chicken breast. And while people eating a plant-based diet are definitively less likely to develop all forms of cancer combined, a University of Oxford study conducted over more than 12 years showed the greatest protection provided was against blood cancers. So in essence, Savino is insisting children consume foods that severely increase their risk of the very cancers she's claiming to fight, while criminalizing their most effective prevention. It's a perfect illustration of the perverse self-sustaining cycle upon which corporatized medicine, the animal products industry, and some governmental programs depend. Make a big show about the honorable search for the cure, hold fundraisers and marches, make ribbons and social media challenges, pull in billions of dollars for research, and be sure to ignore the mounting and long-standing evidence that simply changing our diets would prevent the vast majority of diseases, save thousands if not millions of lives, and trillions of dollars, which may be the point after all. So doctors, nutritionists, and governmental organizations continue to recommend eating animal products, decry the dangers of veganism, and then propose more programs and initiatives to combat the inevitable rise of diseases, vowing nobly to fight the epidemics of their own creation. It's absolute madness. And if we're going to play the false duality game of using isolated cases of children obviously fed unbalanced diets that happen to not contain animal products as proof against veganism as a whole being dangerous for kids, it's only fair to apply the same logic in reverse. How many children have been hospitalized due to diets that do contain animal products? If we really want to help the most children possible, shouldn't we look at the main cause of illness and death? In Italy, just like the United States, heart disease is the number one killer. We've long had proof that a balanced vegan diet can prevent and even reverse heart disease. One in three children in Italy are overweight or obese, one of the highest rates internationally. The largest study to date on body mass index showed the only group within the ideal weight range was vegans, with even the average vegetarian coming in overweight. Still, even vegetarian children grow up thinner and even taller than meat-eating kids. But at least those kids get to grow wider, gaining along with the weight twice the risk of dying from a heart attack, more cancer, gout, arthritis, diabetes, and more. And while vegetarian diets in general confer protection against cardiovascular disease, some cancers, and death, vegan diets offer additional protection for obesity, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease mortality. Only vegans showed significantly lower levels of the cancer-promoting growth hormone IGF-1, with fully plant-based diets even reversing cancer growth. Childhood diabetes alone cuts nearly 20 years off kids' life expectancy. We are condemning our children to death under the guise of their care.
This woeful inadequacy of our system's self-induced impotence was made painfully evident when an eight-year-old boy weighing 200 pounds was removed from his home when authorities determined his condition to be a form of medical neglect. While it's encouraging to see over-nutrition recognized as but the other end of the malnourishment spectrum, such state intervention leaves authorities with the difficulty of determining exactly when a child's weight is dangerous enough. So they offer pathetically empty recommendations for yet more government programs, the absolute farcicality of which bioethics professor Arthur Kaplan elucidates with depressing clarity. One could get ethical whiplash in a world where one arm of the government is so concerned about a child's weight that it removes him from his home, while another branch of the government argues that french fries and tomato paste on pizza should be counted as servings of vegetables. It's fortunate that Savino is focusing on these isolated cases of supposed vegan malnourishment because even if governments were to intervene in the other side of the spectrum, the sad reality is that there are simply too many overweight children to place. And after all, who will take care of their health when neither their government nor their families seem to know how? Savino's insistence that iron, protein, B12, and omega-3, and others must come from animal products ignores the fact that these foods are a package deal. Along with animal protein comes cancer. The vitamin D and calcium in dairy comes complete with acne, premature puberty, multiple pregnancies, breast cancer, prostate cancer, other hormone-dependent cancers, declining sperm counts, excess estrogen, and heart disease. To get the daily recommendation of B12 from eggs, for example, you'd be consuming an entire year's worth of cholesterol. The omega-3 in fish includes the bonus of mercury and PCBs, which adversely affect brain development, result in lower IQ scores, and increase cancer risk and mortality in cardiac patients. Yet when we just skip the middle animal and obtain these nutrients from their original plant sources, they come packaged with the disease-fighting and health-promoting compounds like antioxidants that are completely absent in animal products. And B12, when not present in fortified foods, is easily and cheaply supplemented. And vitamin D supplements are advised for anyone not gaining adequate exposure to the sun. I could spend months attempting to unravel the insanity we've collectively created. I've linked my complete nutrition video series and ongoing vegan parenting and vegan kids series in the sidebar and below. And I've also provided an absurd amount of additional information, citations, and resources on the blog post for this video, which is linked below. In the end, I actually hope this video has helped achieve what Savino says is her goal to increase personal responsibility for our children's nutrition and welfare. I also hope that this video has shown that this must be an individual effort. We cannot trust what we're told. So do the research. Take accountability. This is life and death. If you'd like to help support Bite Size Vegan so I can keep putting in the long, and in this case, particularly maddening, hours, to bring you this free educational resource, please see the support links below where you can give a one-time donation or the link in the sidebar to join the Nugget Army on Patreon. I'd like to give a special thanks to my $50 and above patrons and my whole Patreon family for making this and all of my videos possible. Please share this video far and wide to fight disinformation and save lives, and subscribe for more vegan content every week. Now go live vegan, don't buy the BS, and I'll see you soon. Getting diabetes in childhood cuts nearly 20 years off their life. Who among us wouldn't go to the ends of the earth to enable our kids to live 20 years longer?